finally got around to cleaning that. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So if you've been here before, thanks for tuning in to yet another video. And if you're new here, please get down there and hit subscribe. And while you're down there, hit the notification bell so that you get notified every time we post a new video. So that trunk mat that you guys just saw is the same one that I have in my blue car and I have one in the coupe. So I have a total of three mats now and I only have two GCs. So I need to get rid of one. So if you guys are interested in one of those trunk mats, they're OEM, I guess rubber material. They're like basically weather techs. So I like keeping my cars with weather techs as floor mats. That is actually a cool option that came on some Imprezas. So I have that on my car because it's a cool OEM feature to have. So if any of you guys are interested in one, DM me on Instagram, I'll put my handle right here and we can work out a deal. I like to tell you guys about what I'm selling first. Got dark on us. But yeah, I like telling you guys what I have for sale first because you guys are supporting me by watching these videos. So if there's something that isn't offered for sale much, I like to give you guys the opportunity first before I post it online, just as a thank you. So hit me up if you guys are interested. But anyways, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that my coupe is gonna be kind of like a thrasher. And then this one right here, I'm building it to be more of like a fun, streetable car. So with that being said, I like to put a lot of different options that either this car didn't come with and other GCs do or from other Subarus. I like to incorporate them in this car. So that's what this video is about today. I know you guys already know by the thumbnail and title of this video, but yeah. Let me set you guys up right over here. All right, hopefully the camera doesn't fall. But basically, a lot of people that own GCs have this problem where the wipers either go too fast or too slow, right? Let me show you guys something. So if you can see right here, there's three levels. This is off, this is on the first level, second level, third level, and then there's no more, and that's it. So sometimes I'll be driving and I catch some rain and it starts coming down heavier, let's say, and I need them to go faster than normal, but when I do it, it goes way too fast, like unnecessarily fast. So there's a fix to that so that you can have more, um, adjustments if you will let me show you guys how fast they spin right now so the first level which is just once down and then you have to wait a while for it to happen again see there's a second one second level cycles once and again and again and then the third level so basically, not a whole lot of adjustment there. I believe the GD Subarus, if you have a coupe or a sedan GC, you get one off of a sedan GD. And if you have a wagon, you have a wiper in the back. Or I guess if you have like a JDM version of these, you also have a wiper in the back. You need to get one out of a wagon GD because it'll have the second wiper control for the back. So basically you need one of those. They're pretty inexpensive. You buy them used. You can get them for like 20, 25 bucks. And they have another knob that has basically a bunch of other adjust or yeah, basically adjustments. So I was actually gonna buy one, but then I thought I might have one here in the garage. So full disclaimer, I don't know if I actually do have one here in the garage or not. I haven't checked. I was planning on doing it on camera if i don't i'll have to get one on order and this video will continue then but if i do then we can continue right now let's see oh i see something let me pull it out real quick So since I am planning on doing the swap on the blue car, I have the whole harness right here that I need to get this 
and half of that and send it to iWire. But I also got this full steering column here with the immobilizer and the key, as you can see. And here we go. This is what I was talking about. This is the wiper switch. So you go down, down, down. This one also has three, but then it has these. And these are like the intervals, I guess. So you go down. It has three more or four more. I don't know. We'll see. Basically, this has a lot more adjustment. So we're going to throw this on. It should be just plug and play. So we're going to throw this on and see if it makes an actual difference or not. So I'm going to start by disassembling everything on the steering column on this one. Well, it's not everything. It's how I made it sound a lot worse than it is. You just have to take like the plastic shell off and then you can get to everything. So I'm going to do that first on this and then we'll take it off of this one. Once you take the plastic piece that goes around this whole thing, it's just one Phillips screw here and one here and then this just pops right off. And I'm doing it this way because if I get my wiring harness merged from iWire, I'm not going to have to be using the mobilizer or this key. So I get to use everything that I have for this car because I don't want to use that because right now my key works for all my doors and my trunk and my glove box. So I don't want to have a key that will only work to start it and then I might have to need another key for my doors because I don't know where the key cylinders are for this key right here. So I'm doing it this way. I'm going to have iWire bypass the immobilizer so I can just turn key and start it with my normal key. And a lot of people said that what they've done is just kept the immobilizer with the key in it somewhere under the kick panel, which I mean, if, if iWire can't do it, then I might just have to do that. But basically I'm going to be using my key to start it, unlock it, do whatever the heck I want with it. So let's go ahead and get this thing disassembled and then we will work on doing the swap. All right guys, so I just did a quick check on this to make sure that it is just the three little Phillips that go under this plastic piece right here that you have to remove to disassemble this whole like outer plastic shell here and it turns out I don't know if you guys can see that but I am missing all three screws I don't know what the heck happened to those screws but I'm missing all three of them so basically for me it's a lot easier for you guys just remove those three Phillips from here and then basically you just have to find a way to get this open because it's a two-piece so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use either a trim tool or a flathead Try to separate it and then you can just take it off and you guys will see that but yeah i don't know what the heck happened to those screws <laughs> i'm gonna have to find some um i definitely want to put like the oem stuff in there so i'm gonna have to see which size it needs i have so many screws for these cars that i'm almost 100 percent positive that i will find three screws for this but i don't have them on right now so i am gonna be looking for those and throwing them on after this video is over. All right, so I was actually able to separate it with my, just my hands. I didn't have to use any tools, but the top part is being very stubborn. It doesn't want to come out, but looks like you don't need to take it off just the bottom piece. So the screw is right here. So take this one off and take this one off. The connector is this white one that you see here. Let's go ahead and remove that. All this wiring is so tight in here. Let's see. There we go. Come on. Wow, that's super tight. Okay, so I got it to come loose, but it's not coming out all the way. So let's go ahead and take it off. Okay, <laughs> that works too. Okay, <laughs> well that came out. This does look a little bent. No, but it's supposed to be like that. All right, so we got this one off. Now let's go ahead and take this one off real quick and swap them out. And it should just pop right out. All right, so let's do a quick comparison. So they look to be the same. The switches look like they're, they have the same connector has the wash here this is the same it just has this 
So this is the main difference. This one doesn't have anything. This one does. So this is the one that's going in. So let's go ahead and throw it on the car. I think that looks like a good thumbnail. I don't know. This is what the thumbnail is going to be. So if you're watching this, let me know down in the comments if you like the thumbnail or not. All right. So let's go ahead and well, first I want to see if I can connect it. Let's see. There we go. Now let's try to slide it into place. I don't know if I'm be able to. I wish this thing moved more out of my way. Oh, this thing might be getting in the way a little bit. Wait, is it in there? Let's see. The screw has to line up. Oh no, it's got a long way to go. Crap. All right, well, let's keep playing with it. All right, guys, not gonna lie, this thing did fight me a lot. I put it at the bottom position but yeah it fought me a lot to go in but wasn't too bad if i'm being honest with you guys i fought with it for like three or four minutes but i fought with it basically get it like halfway in and then put your connector in then you can slide it in and then you can finish putting your connector in all the way and then right now it's good it just needs the screws but i want to go ahead and try them out before putting the screws in so let's go ahead see what happens All right, so the difference should be in the first setting, which is the delay. So that's that one. Let's see if this makes it any faster. All right, guys, so I am not seeing any difference whatsoever. So they say the only difference you're supposed to see is in the second setting, which is the delay setting. So it's off, delay, slow which is that and then there's fast so in the delay setting that's when this knob comes to play i got an idea why don't we go ahead and time it so let's pull out our timer here i'm gonna wait for it to go off again bam start let's see how long it takes uh, in order to cycle again. So roughly 21, 20 seconds. Let's put it on the first setting. Ready? Let's put it on now. So. All right, let's see how long this one takes. So about, well, I did it late. I'm gonna say eight seconds. So let's reset that one. Let's put it on the middle setting and let's see how long it takes after this cycle. I'm guessing somewhere around 15. It's kind of like the median, but we'll find out. All right, let's start. Yeah, so like 15 seconds in between the second one. So, if we leave it on off, let's see how long it takes normally. Hold on, let me get a good, bam, start. So it's like two seconds. Okay, so that's what it does. So basically, it's supposed to help for slower rainfall because normally the delay one is every two seconds. You put it on the first one, it's eight seconds. You put it on the second one, it's around 15 seconds and the third one is about 21 seconds let's call it 20 seconds so that's cool all right so let's go let's put this thing back together and then we'll talk all right so there you have it this is a nice little 
quick cheap mod that you can do I would say if you're doing it and you didn't have to take it off of another column like I did you could probably get it done in like 10 to 25 minutes max so pretty quick and pretty cheap because like I said you can get it for like 20 to 30 dollars max so if you just want to use one tool you only need a Phillips if you want to be more prepared you can use a trim tool and a flathead because you may or may not need it to separate the top and the bottom piece or if you can do it with just your fingers you only need a screwdriver a Phillips screwdriver so pretty easy pretty cheap pretty quick I mean it's it's kind of like a no-brainer so I'm glad to know that if I run into some light rain while I'm driving this thing I'm not gonna have wipers that go too fast I can adjust the timing between the intervals so that's pretty cool like I said they are roughly like 8 seconds 14 to 15 seconds and then 20 to 21 seconds in between the three added intervals that you just gained by doing the swap so again Quick little video for you guys. I just wanted to do this because I know winter is here and it's gonna be snowing. Sometimes we'll get really light snow. And like I said, if I'm driving this thing, I don't want the wipers to be going crazy because they're gonna think I'm going crazy. When I see light rain and I see a car like with their wipers like that, I'm like, that dude's crazy. So I don't wanna be that dude. So glad to have done this. Like I said, you guys should definitely Go ahead and do it yourselves. You only need a screwdriver. You only need about 20 bucks and you only need about 15 minutes of your time. So if you guys want to do it, I'd highly recommend you do it. Definitely going to be looking into getting another one because I want to get one on the coupe for sure. Now that I know what this switch does, because like I showed you guys in previous videos, I am going to be doing a single wiper conversion on that car. So I feel like if anything, that one needs it even more than this one. So I'll be getting another one for sure. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel because it helps out a ton. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that little bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. As always, keep moving forward and stay on the gas.